I'm Cheryl Lynn, and I'm back here at the Marina Equestrian Center with my gilding Brody and my mare Joel. And today I thought I would talk to you about some different words that we use in horsemanship and in the equestrian world that describe horses. Um, the first thing that I want to talk about is um, male and female horses and what we call them. Um, there are actually uh, three that we can use for adult horses. One is a mare, which is a girl or a female, and that pretty much doesn't change once, once they're adults. But with male horses, um, we can have two different kinds. We can have a gilding, which Brody is, and Brody has been castrated, or maybe with a dog you call it neutered, to where he can't breed. He cannot be a daddy anymore. Um, we do that for several reasons. One is they tend to be happier if you're not gonna be breeding them, and they tend to focus uh, more on you and less on the other mares. Um, the other would be a stallion, and that would be a male that's intact and can indeed breed and carry on his bloodline um, with mares. And when a stallion breeds, they call that the sire instead of the father of the horse. The mares, when they get pregnant and have babies, they are called the dam. And so those are um, some different terms when we describe a horse, whether it's boy, girl, intact or not. Um, I also thought it would be a good idea to maybe show you different personalities of the horses and also the proper way to feed them a carrot. And you might see some personalities between my two horses, the differences, because they are very different indeed. Um, Brody tends to be pretty chill. Um, he, I call him Scooby-Doo because he's constantly thinking about food. And um, with him, he loves his carrots. And when you go to feed a horse a carrot, you wanna make sure that your hand is flat so they don't mistake your finger for a carrot. And I would not suggest feeding horses that you don't know if they're friendly or not. But when you do, you place it below their mouth and you can see how quickly he'll take a carrot. Uh, one of his favorite things in the world to do is to eat. Joel's a little bit more different. She's a little more gentle when it comes to taking food. Um, and sometimes she can be higher strung or full of more energy. So even though she's an older horse, she could out race this guy any day. And with Joel, when I give her a carrot, look how gentle she is. And this is why she makes such a good horse for kids too, when they're petting her or giving her a carrot. Um, so that's one way to approach a horse, but you always wanna make sure that it's safe because although 90% of horses are um, people lovers and love interaction, uh, there are a few for whatever reason, um, they might try to nip you or, or you could get kicked. <clears throat> While we're talking about getting kicked, you probably all know this, but if you don't, I want to cover it because it's very important. Scoot over, buddy. You probably, if you've ever been somewhere to see horses in person, you probably heard a parent or someone say, don't walk behind the horse. Um, horses kick for different reasons. It might not be that they don't like you, but they do have a complete blind spot Brody's waiting for more carrots. Come up here, I need you for a demonstration. They do have a complete blind spot behind them. So you could walk behind them and they could kick you not knowing who you are. They might think you're a predator or they just might not like it. So when you are walking behind a horse, make sure you walk far enough around the back to where if they did kick out, they can't reach you. So that's always a good thing to know. Um, another thing that I'd like to talk about, when I was a kid, I collected briar horses and I was fascinated with the different colors of the horses. And my favorite was, I thought it was a white horse at the time. Of course, I learned later on, there is no such thing as a white horse. There are gray horses that appear white and there are cremellos. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the horse's features as well. And then I'm gonna take you for a walk around the grounds and we'll see if we can meet some other neighboring horses. Brody is obviously a black horse and um, <clears throat> he's at his peak of perfect blackness right now. However, for about eight months out of the year, parts of his body turn sort of a brownish red. 
So even though he's a black horse, he does have brown pigment in his body coat. Uh, Joel, on the other hand, Joel would be considered either a sorrel or a chestnut. Depends on how you, who you ask. I haven't figured it out yet. It seems like some people that ride Western will call a red horse a sorrel, and some of the English riders will call them chestnuts. But basically, a chestnut and a sorrel are a redhead. Um, some markings that Jewel has, he's got a white blaze. So this is called a blaze, a wide white band down her face. And um, Brody, he has, come here buddy, I'll give you a carrot if you play nicer. Um, he has more of like a strip. It's not quite as wide as Jewel's. So those are some differences. Um, Brody's a little hairier right now because I body clip Jewel because her coat just grows too fast and she's uncomfortable. So, okay, I'm going to take one of my horses and then I'm going to take you on a little tour around the grounds and we'll see if we can find some different colors of horses and some different personalities. Um, sometimes you'll see Jewel has her ears kind of set back and um, when they're pinned flat, that's not a good sign. You want to beware. That's a horse warning you. I'm in a bad mood right now and um, I don't want to be messed with. But Jules is just kind of, I think I'm boring her right now. So, all right, let's take a walk around the grounds here on this foggy day and meet some of the, uh, the residents. Here we are with a beautiful um, herd of mares. All three are mares. And uh, they have some beautiful coloring to them. So I wanted to point out some of these pretty girls. You can see the one walking away with a caramel colored coat and the black mane and tail. And that is called a buckskin. Here we have a paint horse, um, one of my daughter's favorite colorings because obviously they're very fancy. This is a mare, her name is Kona. She's a good girl. Um, so she's a beautiful example of a paint horse and she has white and bay, so she would be considered a bay paint horse. And you can see too with the paint horses, sometimes they have different colors in their mane and tails. Um, so they can have a combination of different tones. <laughs> Kind of pretty to look at. Uh, we've got another paint horse over here. And this is JJ. JJ is a sweet boy. Hi there, buddy. And in some ways, he looks a little bit like Brody because he's got those stockings with um, dapples on him. Here we are with Finnegan, and Finnegan, if you can see the white hairs mixed in with the red, when there's a combination of hairs that are mingled this way, um, you call it a roan. So he is, he would be considered a red roan. Beautiful Arabian horse. Um, he is a gray, but he also has freckles. So I would describe him as a freckled gray. And you can sometimes tell an era by the little dish they have in their heads. Um, bye wizard! <laughs> I've got one more color for you here today and this is Blackhawk. He is actually called a bay. Not a brown horse but a bay. And some components of a bay horse is this brown coat. And you can see they have black points. He's got black on his legs. You might be able to see a little black in his mane and tail and around his nostrils. 
He is a bay, and someone is jealous that I'm not paying attention to him. So that's all I've got for today. Thank you for horsing around with us at the Marina Equestrian Center. Until next time. <laughs>